Hey, Church at Clawson kids, let's all stand up and get up on our feet and get ready to sing some songs about God. We're going to have a great time. Give me a J. Alright guys, that was pretty good. I'll give you that much. But I know that you can do it better. I know you can do it better. So I want you to say it with some conviction. With some oomph, alright? Give me a J! Give me an E! Give me an L! Give me a U! Give me an S! Hey, hey, hey. 
to the top with the voices only. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that Welcome, Church of Colossians kids. We are Palm Sunday Sunday School lesson. How about that? Can't believe how time flies here. So we're ready to start a lesson here today on Palm Sunday, and we'll say a quick prayer, then we'll get right into it, okay? Heavenly Father, Lord, just want to thank you so much for uh, this time that we can share your word uh, with everybody. Uh, we appreciate the kids and uh, here at Church of Clawson, and we just uh, uh, want you to bless them, uh, help them receive a blessing from this lesson, and we appreciate and give you the glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so we're in series two of the Explorers Kids series here. This is lesson number 12, which is going to kind of wind up this series of lessons, okay? And we're talking about Jesus loves me, okay? The Lord Jesus Christ is the most wonderful person in all of God's universe. He is seated at the Father's right hand, and all of God's glory rests in him. He is on the throne of God's universe. To see what a wonderful person Jesus is, and to love him with all my heart, brings pleasure to his heart. Jesus is not a force. He is a person. He wants to be my special best friend. There we go. Okay. He wants me to enjoy him. He wants me uh, to... He wants to enjoy me, too. And the, he wants... Um, the way that best friends enjoy each other. The way to enjoy the Lord Jesus is to love him with all of your heart and to put him first in your life. A young girl named Amanda had learned this secret. She said, I will always put him first in my life. I talk to him a lot. I really love him and he loves me even more. I cannot imagine ever living without him. Everyone in heaven loves and praises the Lord Jesus. I love and praise the Lord Jesus too. And there are three reasons why I love him so much. I love him because of what he did for me. He suffered and he died on the cross that I might be forgiven of sins and belong to him. The Bible says in Hebrews that Christ put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Number two, I love him because of who he is. As the Son of God, he himself is God, yet he is a man, the man, Jesus Christ, whom we know and love. When I think of who I am and of who he is, I am amazed that he loves me so much and that he has come to live in my heart. Number three, I love him because he loves me. Though he is the Lord of glory and is exalted on the very highest place in heaven, okay, Jesus knows and loves each of us with a real and personal love. The Bible says in 1 John, we love him because he first loved us. Jesus loved me so much, he chose me. Before I came to know the Lord as my Savior, I was separated from God, living for myself, 
and doing what I wanted to do. God was seldom in my thoughts. Then an amazing thing happened. Jesus drew me to himself. I was not any better than anybody else, but Jesus chose and saved me. Why did Jesus choose me? He chose me because he loves me. He knew me and he loved me before I was born. This is amazing but true. The Lord Jesus says in Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn to you. Jesus loved me so much, he redeemed me. What does it mean to redeem a person? It means to rescue by paying a price. Before the Lord saved me, I was Satan's slave. I was in Satan's kingdom of darkness, but Jesus loved me so much, he redeemed me. So what was the price that the Lord Jesus paid to redeem me? The price was his own life. On the cross, he gave his life for me. He poured out his precious blood that I might be forgiven of all my sins and belong to him. I can say with the Apostle Paul that the Son of God loved me and gave himself for me. What was Jesus' purpose in redeeming me? His purpose was that I might belong to him. When you buy something, what happens? You pay for it, and now it becomes you. It becomes yours, right? It belongs to you. So the Lord Jesus bought me by giving his life for me. Now I belong to him. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, Do you not know that you are bought with a price? Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are of God's. So Jesus loved me so much, he wants my company. Hmm. The Lord Jesus is God's ruler over the entire universe. He has the power in heaven and in earth. Though he is exalted to the highest place in heaven, the Lord Jesus loves me so much. He wants my company. He wants to, in other words, spend time with me each and every day, reading his word and by praying to him. Those are two ways. Reading is the Lord talking to you. Praying is you talking to the Lord. Would you like me to tell you a secret? It is this. The Lord Jesus is in love with you. You may not realize it, but he loves you with all his heart. Here are some ways that you and I show our love for the Lord Jesus. I show my love for Jesus by giving him the best gift I can give. The best gift I can give to Jesus is myself. Even though I belong to him, he does not make me give myself to him. He wants me to choose to do this because I love him. Here's a little story called The Best Gift. A 13-year-old girl listened intently as the pastor told how the Lord Jesus loved her so much that he willingly went to the cross to die for her sins. He told how the Lord Jesus had redeemed her with his own precious blood that she might belong to him. The little girl's heart was stirred by what she heard. She loved the Lord Jesus with all of her heart, and she wanted to show her love for him. She had no money, so she seemed as though she had nothing to give the Lord. Then she thought of a gift that would please the Lord very much. So when the usher 
in an usher is someone who collects the money, the offering, you know, at a church service, right? When the off, off, usher passed the offering plate, okay, the little girl whispered to him, please lower the offering plate. He lowered it. Then she said, please lower it more. The usher lowered it all the way to the floor, and then the girl stepped in. She was actually giving the Lord Jesus the very best gift that she could get, ever give him. She was giving herself to him. I show my love for Jesus by obeying him. That's a toughie. Believers are obeyers. Jesus said in John, If you love me, keep my commandments. So if I truly love the Lord, I will not do things that displease him. I show my love for the Lord Jesus by spending time with him. Time. Jesus says to each of us, Do you love me enough to spend time with me each day, reading my word and talking to me? I show my love uh, to, for Jesus by looking for his coming. This is the blessed hope of Christians, that someday Jesus is coming to take us to be with him forever. The Bible says in Titus, we are always to be looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus is coming soon, though we cannot know the exact time when Jesus will come. We will know from the Bible he is coming soon. For believers, this will be a time of great joy. Those who die trusting in Jesus will be instantly resurrected with glorious new bodies. Those who are, um, are living when he comes will be instantly changed. All believers will be caught up with him to meet him in the air when the Lord, and will be with the Lord Jesus forever. And you can read about that in 1 Thessalonians 4. In the meantime, we are to expect to have many trials and troubles. We're kind of going through that right now with this virus, right? The Lord Jesus wants us to be faithful to him, though, throughout everything, no matter what happens. A young man was captured by some rebels when they found out that he was a Christian. And the rebel leader told him that if he did not give up his faith in Christ, he would be shot. The young man replied, you can shoot me, but alive or dead, I am Jesus Christ's man. The Lord loves people like that. Jesus Christ is coming for his believers. Unbelievers may laugh and make fun of us, but God's word is clear. God has given us five mighty shalls concerning the coming of Jesus. It says, the Lord shall descend from heaven. The dead in Christ shall rise. We shall be changed, we shall be caught up, and we shall ever be with the Lord. This is all from 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 and 17. So, here are three great facts that we learn from today's lesson. One, the Lord Jesus loved me so much that he chose me, and he chose you too. The Lord Jesus loved me so much that he redeemed me. Jesus gave his life for me that I might belong to him. And number three, the Lord Jesus loves me so much that he wants my company. One way I can show him my love is by spending time with him each day, reading in his word, and talking to him through prayer. Those are three important facts. And now, we go back to our weekly story, Jared and the Secret Sword. Jared and the Secret Sword. This is the conclusion of the story. So now we know so far that one, Jared is a Christian. His friends are watching to see if his beliefs are real. Now that they know he's a Christian, Jared told Carlos why the Bible is his secret sword and how Jesus gives strength to make the right choices. Carlos told Jared that he's going to help Alex fix a raft by the river. Beth told Jared about the plot to put Carlos on the raft 
and push it into the river. And now, Jared could not help Carlos, but Dan, Mr. Foster, and the police came to the rescue. Chapter 12, Victory at Last. So, after a stop at the police station, the officer continued home with Carlos. Jared and Dan walked with them to the front door. When Carlos' father opened the door, he looked alarmed at the sight. The policeman, though, explained what had happened and then stated, You can choose to press charges against the other boys, but we want to put Alex Simmons under court supervision. I do not think you will have any more trouble with him. When the policeman had left, Mr. Marino asked Jared and Dan a few more questions. As they got up to leave, Carlos started to walk with them when his father said, No, son, you need to be with your family right now. Jared and Dan decided to walk over to Beth's. On the way, Jared asked, Dan, how did you find out about what Alex was going to do? Dan grinned and then began, Well, I told you my dad has changed since I took Jesus as my Savior. I kept telling him new things from the Bible. We had great talks, and things are getting a lot better at home now. I have also told them about my new friends, Carlos and Beth, and about Alex, too. Today, he was over at the corner store when Alex and the guys came in. He heard them talking about their plans for Carlos and the raft. Dad sent me to help you while he went to the police station. Dan paused as the boys walked up the steps on Beth's porch. Then he continued with a smile. Since I could not find you, I left a little message with our little helper here. Dan and Jared sat down next to Beth on the porch. It took a while, but we all got there in time. That was great the way that you swam out to Carlos, Jared said, patting Dan on the back. Poor Carlos, Beth said with tears in her eyes. How could Alex, Alex plan such a mean trick? I wish Carlos knew Jesus. Jared's eyes sparkled as he nodded. Carlos has learned a lot in all this, he said. I think he's very close to making that decision. And Jared was right. Just as he finished breakfast the next morning, he heard a knock on the door. There stood Carlos with a big smile on his face, dressed in his best clothes. Do you think I can go to church and Sunday school with you, he asked. Sure, Jared said. Let me get my Bible and we'll go. Even my parents are going this morning. On the way to church, Carlos whispered in Jared's ear, Do you think I'm a coward for being afraid of the water? No, of course not, Jared answered quietly. Not after what happened to your brother. But I know that if you trusted Jesus, he would help you overcome your fear and help you learn to swim. Who knows, maybe you could save the life of a drowning child someday. That would really be something, Carlos replied as they walked to church. The Sunday school lesson was on telling others about Jesus' words and actions. Carlos listened to every word. The teacher told the class that it was very serious not to tell others about the Lord Jesus. He told the words of Jesus in the Bible, that if we are ashamed to tell our friends about Jesus, he'll be ashamed of us when he comes again. As they were leaving the classroom, Carlos turned to Jared and whispered, Jared, I want to become a Christian. Do you think the teacher will help me? Yes, yes, he will, Jared said excitedly. Take as much time as you need. When the teacher heard that what Carlos wanted, he smiled and sat down with him and began to explain the steps of how to become a Christian. He told them that he must be sorry for his sins and realize that God loves him and wants to forgive him, that Jesus died for him, and that he must receive Jesus as his personal Savior.
When the teacher saw that Carlos understood what he was saying, they prayed together. And Carlos received Jesus as his Savior. On the way home, the boys were so excited that they could not stop grinning. Jared, Carlos said, I'm sure glad you were not ashamed to tell me about Jesus. The way you chose to do the right things and said you were sorry when you did the wrong things, that all helped me to want to become a Christian. Now we have to pray for Alex and all the other kids at the school too. Yes, yes we will. Beth prays for them every day. She's been praying for you. And, uh, and for a long time, too. I think she will be home from church by now. Let's go tell her of the decision you just made. When Beth heard the news, her face sparkled with delight. As the boys were leaving, she reached into a box and pulled out a silver sword bookmark. Carlos, this is for you, she said. I know Jared will want you to have one because you are best friends. Carlos held the silver bookmark in his hand, and he began to read Psalm 119.11. Your word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Then he turned over the bookmark and read Ephesians 6.17. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Then he said, Thank you, Brett, Beth. I know if I use my sword as well as Jared has used his, the Lord Jesus will be pleased. He certainly will, Beth replied as she waved goodbye. And that's the end of the story there. Next week, we're going to start another new series of lessons. So let's end now in a prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much for loving uh, me and everyone so much. I belong to you. No matter what happens, I want to live for you. Help us all to want to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray. So that's the lesson for Palm Sunday, Church at Clawson Kids Sunday School. See you next week. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, uh. You've heard this verse about a thousand times. You can't get mad that it's stuck in your mind. It's about God's love for you and me. So let's sing it. Let's sing John 3 16. Oh God, so love the Mm-hmm.